everyone, it's me, Easy Patience here. Oh my gosh! Oh no, it's a zombie! It's a zombie! It's a zombie! Wait, wait a minute, wait, wait a second. It, it, it's just my husband. Okay, everybody, we're here in a dimly lit cabin to talk to you about having gone to see World War Z, the movie. Uh, I am here with my hubby, Hello. Adam. And uh, we went to go see that movie, and now we're going to talk about it, and there are going to be spoilers all over the place. So many. So turn back now if you don't want to have the movie spoiled, and there might even be spoilers for the book. And if you want my review on the book, go check it out. I already did that. I'm that awesome. Since this is the first time my husband and I are collaborating, it might be a little weird and kind of different. And you guys know that I that I kind of wing these sort of things. So hopefully we'll try to keep it structured and I've got my little notebook back over here to help keep it structured. So um, our opinions of the movie differ, which is why we're both here. She's wrong. Yeah, whatever. Um, my eyes tend to be very harsh on movies and he tends to be, in my opinion, a little too uh, nice to them. So you'll get both sides of the coin on this particular movie. <clears throat> Alright, so the first thing we want to mention, and I'm sure this is a no-brainer for many of you out there, but movies are not books. And this is based on the book. I know, I know, shocking. But when you take a book and you try to make it a movie, it's, it's a lot like ripping the heart out of somebody and then trying to transplant it into somebody else. Not even surgically removing the heart, just ripping it out. Not that you can't be successful with it, but it is rather difficult. And sometimes you end up more with a Frankenstein than a, a rebirth. However, it is not completely impossible, which is why I expect more from you movies. Some movies that I think did really great adaptations are Lord of the Rings, Her The Hunger Games, and even Harry Potter to some extent really at least captured the feel and the tone and the ideas in the books that they're based on. So it can be done. I feel World War Z did capture the feel and the tone, at least, of the book. However, obviously, I disagree and feel that it did not. It's helpful for this review if you have read the book. And that leads me to my uh, beginning question, I guess. Got my little notebook here. Why was it even called World War Z? Because, in my opinion, it has almost nothing in common with the book. Uh, let's see, we'll just start going down the list and then we'll go back and forth here. Uh, there were only a few lines that I recognized from the book and a few brief characters that got more of cameos. If you're not familiar with the book, go get familiar with the book. But the way the book goes is that the sort of main character is actually sort of a non-character and he's just interviewing all of these people who have survived the zombie war. He says he wants to get the human side of the war. And I don't feel like they did the... they completely bypassed that in this movie. They just sh shot off into left field. If you've seen the movie, you know that there is one main character, heroic white guy, roaming around, saving the day, and instead of focusing on a bunch of different characters, it is other minor characters existing to serve him and build him up. Adam, your thoughts? I disagree almost 100%. First of all, I don't feel the minor characters serve to build up the lead character. Uh, because the lead character is pretty much the same at the end as he is at the beginning. I, I feel that the, the minor characters all exist to show humanity. And that is what we both agree, that the, the main point of the book was to show the different aspects of humanity. Now this again comes the difference of media. In a book, they dedicated a chapter or two at least to each character. And each chapter takes you 20, 30 minutes to read. So you're talking, if you and, and a lot of this, getting to know the characters, an inner monologue. So, you would have a very boring movie if you had 60 minutes of inner monologue per character to get to know. So, in a book, you kind of get the bucket full of personality from a, per from a character as it develops. And in a movie, especially when you're trying to get a dozen different characters or so in one single movie, you, you start to get... You need Joss Whedon. So in a movie, you get more of an eyedropper full, and you can't... Look at it and like, this character in this movie did a horrible job of developing as a character. Look how much better it is in the book. Of 
course it's going to be better in the book. So I feel many of the characters did develop at few of them changed, but you got to see a lot of different characters revealing a lot of different aspects of humanity and how they handled themselves in the zombie apocalypse. Um, I think the nods to the book World War Z were more prevalent than Emily does. I don't think it just has to quote verbatim dialogue in order to be a nod to it. It has to have at least a little bit more than a few sentences. It, it to me was clearly set in the same world. Well, and it had yeah, it was several set in the same world. Aspects. Okay, set in the same world, right? Which brings me to my next point. The thing is called World War Z, and the book did an excellent job of making it clear that it wasn't just America in this war, and other countries were doing better than the United States. In this one, yeah, okay, you saw that the United States was overrun, but it was still one white American. Traveling the globe, saving the day, or kind of dooming everyone he encountered, but that was just <clears throat> a little... Thing. As an aside, the movie never specifies which national heritage he specifically comes from. He himself, though he like lived... Boston or something. He is living in Boston at the beginning of the movie. He is working for the UN and has a history as a field agent for the United Nations. He could be from any... English speaking country <laughs> yeah, but of the he United is Nations. A white guy with an American accent. Um, his two pilots that he initially sets off with both are foreign. Um, Let me finish my thought first before you start. It's not just before America. Before you come but, back yeah. with, re with your rebuttal. Okay, so in the book, you get the opinion, you get like the stories, the personal stories of people from all over the world, from China, from India, from Israel. And in this one, he kind of goes to those places, but I don't, it never felt personal. It never felt like I was finding out what their experiences were. And in the book, Israel is doing really well. And in the movie, they, they're like doing really well until this white guy shows up and then he brings the bad luck with him and all of a sudden they're overrun. What the fuck is up with that? What are you trying to say to me, movie, that other countries can't handle it? Well, okay. So. <laughs> One city in Israel was overrun. They didn't even call in the airstrikes yet by the time the guy was running away. I'm sure they were going to handle it. The book is takes place after the war and gets to highlight many of the successes the different nations and the different groups have had. The movie is taking place at the beginning of the war, in which 99.99% .99 of humanity is killed. It's hard to be, yeah, look at how awesome other parts of the world are doing when they're all getting slaughtered. Which kind of misses yet another point in the book, and I know I'm starting to sound like a broken record, but it brings me back to my initial point of why I call it World War Z when it's going to have very little in common with World War Z other than the universe, the world. In the book, again, going back to the book, broken the, the, the thing is, a, is to, like the story starts at the end of the war and he's getting people's experiences from it, and that was a way that the book was not just another zombie story because all of them deal with the outbreak. I'm sick of the outbreak. I want to know. I wish it had taken place more as the war was ending, like the book did, than the outbreak again. We've seen it. Well, they didn't take initial outbreak. They pretty much took everything was already overrun at, for the most part. Yeah, but and a lot guy, of them do that. You know, this like, guy, the guy was... wakes up and suddenly his street is full of zombies and he's got to run. Yeah, but th this act stuck with the movie as in uh, the movie stuck with the book because the book was one of the few times where humanity and civilization survive. In other other zombie stories, humanity survives, but not civilizations. We got clubs and we got guns, and that's about it. When the gas runs out, we're done. But civilization and nations survive. They continue to have resources, though using those resources usually costs lives. Uh. And so, because, so it has much of the same atmosphere as the book does. I disagree, but carry on. I would have loved the story from the book, because it is not just another zombie story, it, and it really captures all of these different characters, and you know, they didn't have... The wheelchair guy. They didn't have the chick who got lost in the swamp and was helped by that mysterious woman. They didn't have blind monk living on a mountain killing zombies. And that would have been so much cooler, in my opinion, than one white guy running around trying to find the cure. 
What? Uh, yeah, that... I don't know whether movie makers thought that maybe we would be unable to enjoy a movie where it doesn't follow one character, but I would have, would have enjoyed the hell out of it. I, I don't know about you guys. What do you think, Adam? Well, I, I think, again, it's a difference between uh, medias, movie and book. In the book, you had time to fully explore a full cast of dynamic well, characters from not, disparate backgrounds. I'm not saying that they would get every character, but they could get quite a few. I think, going back, uh, we both agree that the point of the book was to explore humanity, albeit in a post-apocalyptic recovery from zombie dystopia. And a lot more of all of humanity. Well, e e the book is still kind of limited, and many of the characters that are not Eurocentric, um, I believe there's only three major characters that are not Eurocentric. One, we get nothing of the culture and very little of him, the, the, the dr cab driver guy. The Chinese guy, we get a, a very of little bit of, of culture and a little bit of him. And then the Japanese guy, we get a lot of culture and a little bit of him. So, I mean, it's not like it's really There was also humanity. an Indian and the uh, Israeli guy with the whole boat thing. Oh, yeah, there was another one mentioned in the boat. But, I mean, what do we get to see of culture or personality with him? We don't. We get to see... People desperately trying to push a boat into the ocean to get away. That, do that doesn't explore humanity. I want to see more of that, man. Boats getting dragged into the ocean. Yeah, I was apart. waiting for the, the scare. One of the scariest things in the book is that, like the zombies are fucking under the water grabbing people. They didn't even what? Cause that would have been so cool looking. Back me up on this. <laughs> I don't know if I'm wrong. I agree. Some things could have been cooler, like watching blind monk slaughter zombies would be a pretty freaking awesome action movie. But I think they were trying to capture humanity. And, I mean, it's. I don't think the book succeeded in capturing humanity. Obviously, a movie's going to have a much more difficult time with it. You're getting an eyedropper up full of different hum pieces of humanity at a time, trying to squeeze it into a movie. And for the media, I think it did a good job. Um, you only get brief snippets of them, but you explore many different types of humans and how they handle the apocalypse. One guy who's brave and brilliant, a little bit creepy, but doesn't know what to do with a gun or in a combat situation and trips and shoots himself in the head. See, the long list of humanity that we're exploring. Badass soldier chick who isn't just cookie cutter badass slaying everything left and white she has an emotional breakdown but see there her getting were better up. characters in the book anyway to sum up let's sum up my feelings on this movie is it is an average zombie flick that does not deserve to be called world war z adam i would say it is an above average zombie movie um it is not an amazing zombie movie it's not a 28 days later it doesn't revolutionize the genre but it's definitely above average especially considering the zombie movies we've been seeing in general in the modern era you know i mean the last five to ten years uh, i think it does a good job of paying homage to the book world war z well there you go our two opinions i do agree there are cooler characters they could have followed. I still want blind ninja zombie killer. Right? He was awesome. That's what I loved about the book. Every time there was a new character, I'm like, well, now this is my new favorite character. No, so if no. you haven't read blind World War Z... ninja zombie killer, my favorite character. There was no new favorite character. <laughs> if you haven't read World War Z and you like zombies, definitely go check it out. If you like zombie movies, yeah, go watch this one. It's pretty cool on the big screen. We didn't see it in 3D because... <laughs> Why? <laughs> so, yeah, we, we can't help you with the 3D, but if you like zombie movies, go see it in the big screen, but maybe if you've read the book, be prepared to maybe be disappointed, unless you're like him. But, uh, thanks for watching this Initial Impressions review with the both of us. I don't know if we'll do another one of these collaborations again, because we have, like, very little time together to do this kind of thing. But if you guys, like, overwhelmingly love it for some reason, uh, let us know. Maybe we'll try to do more. Peace out!